but we're going to be getting live very, very quickly here. Smoke and a couple of flashbangs picked up by Rubino. He does tend to pick up the utility for Nordavind, while Eccles is going to be picking up the Diffuse Kit for that CT side. Armour for the remainder of the Fierce Squad and a fairly standard setup. They are going to send a couple of players onto that early Fountain Peak. Astro and Alex going for it. The Flashbang should keep Astro away for a little while and he's going to be overwhelmed very early on. The aggression coming in from that T side. Rubino already pushing their way through in towards the bathrooms. Alex has found an early shot. Astro alive on the site's going to get a second and they are locking down A so far as Astro gets a second. Chroman finally trade is... But this is looking awkward already for Nordavind. Chroman and Hulzerk, last two are left alive on the server. And you can see Fierce are just responding, swarming onto the site. They've got the flank on through Stanley, who's locking it down as Frey hits a lovely one-tap. It's all onto Hulzerk. He gets the first, but that is all he will get. Fierce take the lead. One to nothing. I want to check if the vetoes have gone up yet. Uh, overpass, yeah, it is. Fierce picked up Nuke. Okay, sweet. I now know what's going on, and I can get back to the casting. Fierce taking that pistol round in style, looking very, very on it. Hitting their shots to start things off. Instantly investing on a couple of M4s, SMGs for the remainder of that Fierce side. As the Force Bite does come in for Nordavind. We're seeing this more and more these days. People, teams opting to buy into that second round. Eco on the third if it goes wrong. And then get the full rifles out in round number four. Deagles, the one scout for Hulzerk. He can be absolutely lethal with that, as he has proven time and time again. Tenski... Eating a little bit of early nade damage as the setup from Eccles will get a little bit of damage. And Nordavin just slow this round down. They do have the Deagles. They want to try and find the picks at range. Utilize those long range engagements with the Deagle. And indeed with the Scout, if Hulzerk starts finding a couple of tags, he can make things really awkward for the CT side who have invested fairly heavily into this round. Two M4s picked up. Everybody's invested almost all of their cash. Eccles, the only one with $300 left in the bank, is now Nordavin. They're starting to get control of the bathrooms. Looking like they're trying to split this A bomb site where currently there's an MP9 and an M4. Astro sitting back on the site trying to take advantage of range. But Hulzerk has that scout towards long. And Alex is getting flanked from both sides here. This could get very awkward. Eccles has come up on the rotation. But Alex has to go big as the pop flashes come through. He swings wide. Won't find anything. There's damage. But Chroman's taking him down. And now Nordavind with the smokes will look to swarm the bomb site. Eccles and Astro though. They've got the lineup. The bomb is down, and all of a sudden, it's four versus two. What a nice setup. Eccles is going to get a second and start to hunt with the MP9. Cleans up shop. And two to nothing, the scoreline. What a start for Fierce. That looked a little bit awkward as Alex went down with the MP9 early on, but it's a really nice recovery. Eccles and Astro just playing off of each other, really hitting their lines. It was a really nice pre-fire. Eccles calls the information. Astro's got the line up through the smoke with that M4A4. Simple counter-strike done well as it will be the eco coming in. Finally, for the T side, Nordavin, they've ran out of cash. They're grabbing Deagles, P250s, whatever they can try and do damage with. As Chroman finds a nice dink to open things up, but not quite the frag. Astro brought down to 15, might look to trade that M4 away to one of his teammates as... Tenski's actually going to be able to find an opening. Stanley using that Deagle as a shotgun makes things a little bit awkward as Alex is finding the refrag. So there's a UMP available for Tenski here. Can look to do some more damage. Frey's trying to get aggressive. That leaves him vulnerable, but the aim punch a little bit too much for the Nordavind man. As Rubino and Hulzer gets two P250s in towards Phoenix and they really haven't got a lot of map to work with. Still so much utility available on the fierce side of things. And as bonus rounds go, this hasn't been too shabby so far. Alex... Farming with that MP9. Might just fall to Rubino here, and indeed he will. The UMP able to do a little bit more, but Eccles is going to hold on to the M4. And that's the really important thing there for the CT side. They keep three M4s up. They keep that cash nice and well floated. As the first pause will come in, we should expect to see Nordavin buying into this one. Should expect to see the AKs, and a little bit of a bonus round can come out. I wouldn't be surprised if we see the full buy coming in from Fierce. Wouldn't be surprised if indeed, there you go, Astro instantly picking up that AWP. They haven't really kept any SMGs up, so there's no reason to reinvest onto them. Grab the M4s, grab the rifles, get that AWP onto Astro nice and early on. He's rocking it at the moment, currently 5-0. and oh. Just needs to find that vein of form. I believe this is Nordavin's map pick for all intents and purposes. I'm going to have a cheeky Stalker HLTV and see if they've uploaded bands yet. They haven't as soon as they do. I will let you guys know. We've already got the spam this thing to help pings going off in the chat. Lovely to see you guys all coming in and watching, supporting the UK side of things.
Let's see if we can get a second UK team into the quarterfinals here. Indeed, it will be the full by Stanley opting to stick with that AUG despite the nerf. One Krieg out onto Rubino. Up for Hallsirk. He's managed to afford it just about. Sacrificing the head armor. But of course against M4 is not too much of an issue. AK's in a Krieg for his teammates. Early presence is going to be towards the B-bomb site on this occasion. Haven't really seen Nordovin test this too much. The boost over the top should get the information. And spamming away. Not finding too much. Harry's got a very advanced position towards short. That Molotov going to force him back. Little bit of damage as Nordovind taking that fast control of Phoenix. Nade lineups to do some work. Not as much as it deserved, though. And Fierce currently with three towards this B-bomb site. Not looking too phased by the early aggressions of Nordovind, who have just fallen back into a default here. They've got a very passive hold from Hulzak. A deep monster smoke comes in from the CT side. That's allowing Stanley to take map control away with Frey to support. This spam through could do a lot of work for Rubino, but he's not going to risk things. As Nordovin, they're just starting to pry towards the A-bomb site. Now, they've got the bathrooms through Chrome, and if Astro spots him, he will do, but only the tag through the wall, down to 17, and this is where Nordovin can start to try and rearrange the attack. Just backing out of that B-bomb site. They've left the bomb very passive. This time, Hulzerk holding outside of Monster, waiting for the aggression from the CT side. Of course, with that spot, they're hoping that a rotation will come in for the CTs, but... Frey not fussed whatsoever. Still going to be sitting in towards that monster. Smoke misses its target just slightly. Can Nordovin find an in here? Frey's got a lovely angle to shut this one down before it even gets started. There's a couple of tags to work with as well. Still plenty of utility. Five flashbangs still available for Fierce. As the flashes will come out. Stanley takes the early dink. Rubino's taking the first. The trade's only a one for one. So the advantage is there for Nordovin. Although there are tags to work with. On the site, Eccles has really got to try and lock this one down. Time running out. If he can deny Bomb Plant, this could be very awkward. But Nordovin will just about get it down. Four versus three now. Retake coming in and Harry's going to shut it down. Tenski takes down Astro. And Alex is left one versus four. And he has no idea the aggression's coming already. The lineup is there. Nordovin getting their first rifle round on the board. And executing really, really well. It was a little bit unfortunate for Astro that he can't quite find that tag and the kill. He does take a little bit of damage onto Chrome and takes him down to 17. But then, I mean, Nordovin, they just execute well using that utility. Flashbang, smoke's coming out, locking out the bomb site, and the Force Buy will come in for Fierce. Not going to be the best one in the world. Stanley struggling on the cash department, as it is a very strong full buy for Nordovin. Two Kriegs, the Orc coming out for the range stuff. As Astro, he wants to get early aggression in. Already pushing up to the fountain, but you can see Nordovin, they really haven't been too bothered about the A presence early on. They're putting Tenski in towards short. They're always putting that Phoenix presence in. A very passive hold from Harry towards the A bomb site, Just holding for the push up to fountain. As now they're going to start to make their presence known to Tenski. Oh, the timing is huge here. He gets the first. The spray not quite good for the second, but he will find the tag as Astro on that AWP starts to do some work towards the long bathrooms. He needs support, and Alex knows it. The smoke will buy a little bit of time for the CT side to get this rotation in as Astro just hightails it back to the site. Changes his mind at the last minute. Going to go for the hold towards long. Four versus three. That's a really nice pick by Astro, who has been playing aggressive in towards those bathrooms. Looking to be proactive for his team on that AWP. Exactly what you want to see. Clearly feeling it early on as Alex... It's going to take over on that long hold. Rubino walks right into the crosshairs of Frey. And this is a lot, lot worse for Nordovin. Really struggling to get going in this round. Pot flash won't blind Hulzerk. But the one-for-one -one trade is in. And it's all on the Orpa now. One versus three. The straight peak is good. Frey's even going to save a secondary AWP. And that is exactly what you want if you're a fan of Fierce. They get knocked down, but they get up again almost instantly recovering. Saving a Krieg and the AWPs. It's looking really, really good for the CT side early on. Dealing with that second rifle round. Of course, Nordovin, they had a little bit of cash built up in the bank. They will be able to get the full buy out. They've even gone for three Kriegs here to try and take these ranged engagements. And this time, again, similar setup early on. They are going to send Hulzak a little bit more aggressive with the Krieg. Astro spamming through the smoke. Not quite going to connect onto anything in particular. Again, Tenski is going to eat that early nade. Eccles has got him absolutely lined up early on. He's trying to spot out the boost from the CT side. But Fierce not interested in taking that short control. Clearly feeling confident in Astro on that AWP. He's currently holding towards the divider. Flashed off the angle. Will fall back. Just using that utility to lock Nordovind out for a little while longer. He know he has support on the site in the form of Alex. The ex-Fanatic Academy player. Just holding passively. The boost is spotted out. And what a shot from Astro. Again, he is locking down that A-bomb site at the moment. Finding the opening picks consistently for his side. 
The only time Nordavind have had success has been when they've unlocked B. Bullzerk, though, looking to correct things up on the boost. The tags are traded. Somehow, Astro hits that flick. Not quite able to find the frag again. He's getting damage off, but not quite finding the kills as now Stanley. Oh, look at that aggression in towards Monster all the way through. He is getting so much information for the CT side. The rotation has already come through. The third player is making their way up onto the A bomb site. It's Eccles on the Krieg. And the smokes to try and stop this execute. Frey's even got a pop flash for this. They just need to hold here, Fierce. Astro's still alive. First with the orb as Eccles gets a second. And Astro is locking down A. Again, Hulzerk left alone. He will find one. Finds the second as well on the creep. But the swing peak is shut down. Astro, of course it would be Astro. A quad kill towards that A bomb site. Double digits already. And we're only six rounds into things. What a start for Astro. I'm sure he's going to be feeling good at the moment. Already hitting the double digits. Clearly looking good on that AWP at the moment. Looking like he's really hitting his shots. And there can be no complaints if you're a fan of Fierce. Again, Nordavin, they haven't really looked to mix up the strategy too much. Astro going on the aggressive peak. Going to miss the initial shot. Falls back in towards the long bathrooms. Has been where he's liked to sit so far. This time, Eccles going for the boost. It is against the half buy, and he will rip the head off of Tenski. They're not risking that boost against the full buy, and I like that from Fierce. They're not looking to push their luck too far when the rifles are out. Astro falling back to the site. Of course, he knows he's got the AWP. Chrome and nice and aggressive, but Astro has read it to perfection. The Deagles might have a chance of overrunning Alex here, but so far they've really found nothing in terms of damage. Rubino, edge of the smoke, an easy enough find for Alex. And now he needs to support his Orpa, actually. Astro brought down to 24. But again, this is where the utility just becomes so crucial for Fierce. They've got the utility to work with. Alex and Eccles are going to look to hunt these two remaining players for Nordavind. Lock them out of getting anywhere near this site. Eccles learnt that spray just about. Alex mops up shop. 6-1. to one. The Deagles not doing anything for Nordavind. They find a couple of tags, but they're not quite hitting their shots yet. Nordavin not quite finding their footing in this game. And the saved Krieg on Eccles is doing good work. I mean, if you're fierce, you're loving what Astro's doing right now. He's just being so proactive on that A bomb site. Pretty much solo locking it down. Alex provides a really nice supporting role as we will see the buy coming in for Nordavind again. They're getting everything they need, but they need to start cracking open the bomb site. This time they'll head to B. Has been a little bit weaker for Fierce so far. Taking that early Phoenix control, and it looks like they're just going to hightail it up short. Fully blinded. Stanley, can he get it done? He gets one. He gets two. The trades are coming through, though. Finally, Frey looks to chime in with one of his own, and he's found a good tag onto Hulzerk as well. The smoke to buy a little bit of time. It's all down to Hulzerk and Tenski. That was such a nice play by Stanley. As Hulzerk flashed off the angle, Frey is buying so much time. He's spotted the bomb out as well, getting even more damage onto Hulzerk, who's just down to eight points of health. And this is where the support lines start to come in. Three versus two. Nade onto Tenski brings him down to 72. And I mean, Hulzerk on that AWP, he really has to start finding some more frags. On 7 HP, he's managed to sneak his way out of Monster. But the bomb is down on the site at the moment for Nordavind. And Hulzerk needs to be the instigator. Hits the shot, but Frey insta-trades and it's all on Tenski. One versus two. He's made his way out of Monster. He's sneaking onto the site. But Fierce, they've got all the angles covered here. Frey will hit the shot. 7-1 to one the scoreline. Stanley on the edge of that flashbang getting a beautiful double kill. And locking down that B bomb site again. Fierce looking good. And they're really keeping up with the pace that Nordavind are trying to set early on. They tried to go fast. They tried to catch that T side off guard. But not doing anything for them. 7-1 to one the scoreline. Fierce are looking good. I spoke earlier about how Nordavind have looked good in their recent tournaments. They've beaten Tricked. No chance Vega. But Fierce... They're making them look foolish so far. Looking to get aggressive again. Astro and Alex, they want to be proactive on those peaks towards A. They're allowing those B players to hold the more passive positions by a little bit more time. As Eccles goes for the jump peak, the punishment not quite there for Tenski. Can't quite hit the shot. And that timing from Fierce is so, so good. Alex and Astro, they just fall back as soon as things get interesting. Harry, you can see he's on that advanced position towards Divider. Astro a little bit slow on the shot, but still finds the frag. And finds his team that man advantage. And this is just allowing them to maintain that three-player B-hold. They're not having to rotate anybody towards air. As a little bit of team damage comes in on the nades. And I mean, if you're Nordavin, these Deagles have got to do a lot more. Chroman finally able to find one. Chroman with the 2-1 Deeks. And he single-handedly opened up B. He's going to swarm. And Eccles is in a really awkward spot now. Somehow gets the double kill. But Chroman on for the triple. And he'll find it as well. 2v2. M4 recovered. And Rubino. Hits the 1D, get his all on to Astro. He's been a saviour for Fierce so far. But he's in a 1 versus 2 at Heaven here. And the Deagles are doing a lot of work this time for Nordavind.
They don't have a lot of money either. How are Fierce put in this situation? They're seven to one up, but the cash really isn't there. You can see Astro switching out to the P250. He's got a couple of flashes and a Molotov. If he drops that Molly towards short, he could lock Nordovin clean out of this, but there's not a lot of time on the clock to make it happen. The Molly will come in. Chroman on low HP. He's going to have to fall back off of that, but Astro, he's running out of time. He's got so many angles to clear. So little time. Time is ticking down. He goes for the stick. The flashbangs come out, but there's too much presence. Rubino on the recovered M4 will make it a second. Second for Nordavind and the Deagles, they finally pay off. Finally, Nordavind find an opening. They find that B bomb site. Chroman going absolutely nuts with the Deagle, catching Stanley as he tries to make up for the early frag. And I mean, Eccles, he did a really good job to find the double from Water, but just not quite enough. It's opened up an opportunity here for Nordavind. The buy is not great for Fierce. Alex dropping down onto the MP9. It's going to be up to Astro really to be the frag finder towards the A bomb site. Now, Nordavind looking to keep up this relentless pace. They are already out towards long. They are already taking map control away from the CT side. You can see Astro's fallen back, and he's going to take a new angle, holding that for that long aggression. Doesn't hit the shot. That leaves him very isolated. We'll find the opener, but now Hallzerk's onto him, and he's absolutely stuck here. The flashbang going to do nothing for him. Tries to escape. Hallzerk jumping hits the shot. And we take a pause. Four versus four. The AWP is down. And what the Fierce do here? Astro has been such a catalyst for their success so far in this half. They know they need to find something. Alex posted up in the bathroom. Stanley has rotated up to offer that support line. Everybody just takes stock for a moment. Nordavin look to mix things up as Fierce. They're going for aggression. They're opting to try and be proactive. They've taken Phoenix control. Frey is now posted up. Eccles can drop back towards the site. As Rubino's just watching for anything coming out towards long. Not going to be anybody there, of course. And Frey is absolutely crucial here. You can see Tenski trying to make his way down connector. If Frey can find the frag here, things start to get really awkward indeed for Nordovin. They need that second prong of the attack. Three players currently outside of the monster area. Just going to be holding passively, but oh, Fierce, they've committed the rotation. They've not got any presence at all towards B now. They will be playing retake as it's just the sneak out of Monster coming in from Nordavind. They are not using any utility. They are not giving any idea of this hit. Tenski spotted out Frey, and he knows he's trapped now, being naded at from all sides. He's trying to do whatever he can to stay alive by time for the rotation, and he will find the frag. Tenski taken down, four versus three. The retake has to come in, though, for Fierce. They have to try and find a way into the B-bomb site as Astro misses the early shot, spots out Croman, but that buys even more time for Nordovin just to keep this site locked down, and there's not much utility left for Fierce. One flash, one smoke grenade, and it's really looking awkward as Croman will find the frag. There's damage to work with, but again, the M4's not quite doing it. Finally, Stanley finds an entry, but his teammates need to be proactive as well. Hulzerk and Rubino are frag apiece. It's all on to Alex. Ten seconds left. Time just isn't there for the Orpa. Hulzerk drops the smoke, escapes the site, and it will be a third for Nordovin. These rounds are going right down to the wire, but Nordovin finally starting to find their feet in this matchup. A third round on overpass, and we believe it's Nordovin's map pick. We're not certain just yet, but as soon as I know any more, I will let you guys know. 7-3 to three the scoreline. Nordovin need a few more rounds before you could call this a really decent half of CS. I'd say 6 wouldn't be too bad in this scenario, as we will see Fierce taking the eco. Alex, of course, saves the AWP and armor, but... P250s, a couple of default pistols for the rest of his teammates. As again, early presence towards Monster Alex on the orbs. Jumped up and hits the shot. Hulzerk unable to punish. And he spotted so much information there. Instantly, the bomb looks to retreat on the back of Rubino. Nordovin, no, they need to change up the strategy as Alex has just spotted out single-handedly what was going to happen there. Spots at least three players. Hits the shot, takes down Harry, makes it expensive. Cannot ask for more from your Orpa as now he's going to go for a little bit of a boost. Start to peer into Phoenix. These nades will be heard towards the A-bomb site. You can see Astro. He's just there to try and gather that information. Get any kind of movement. Anything he hears, he'll call the rotations up. They can afford to leave Alex solo anchoring a bomb site here. He does have that AWP, of course, to work with as Astro. Just jump peeking, trying to get any kind of information. Trying to find whatever he can. 
anything to give his team the advantage. The orb on the back of Alex is still holding in towards the B-bomb site. Has just come off the boost now. As again, Nordovin, same strategy. They're going to sneak their way out onto this B-bomb site. Tenski manages to find the opener. Alex on this orb needs to hit the shot, and he will do. Takes down the second player. This is so, so expensive for Nordovin at this point. Coming off of that peak, still Hulzert goes back and finds it. The orb is now down. 3v3, 2p250s, and a default pistol as Hulzert and Rubino are cleaning up house. Astro actually able to find one on that USPS, but the orb is in such an awkward position. No chance of a recovery. They've made it expensive, but now should be an easy enough find, and indeed it will. Nordovin, they clean up the eco. They clean up the orp on Alex. They lose three players, so expensive to say the least, but they will not be fussed about that. All they care about is rounds at this point. 7-4 the scoreline. Of course, we believe this is their map pick, so they're going to be looking to get off to a flying start here in this best of three series. Rifles across the board, no hero orb for, for Astro on this occasion, just the M4s to work with. Could that be the catalyst that Nordovin need? They have Hallzerk on that AWP. He's looked good so far this series. He's such a sensational orper for Nordovin. There's again looking for that control of Phoenix, looking for Connector Tenski, just trying to lock down any kind of aggressions from Fierce. Alex lining up a little bit of a smoke into the B bomb site. Nordovin are playing very passively again. Saw a lot of this in the first few rounds. They took fast control and then just sat on it for such a long time. Tried to wait for the information finding plays from Fierce. But they've looked comfortable just sitting back on their sights. Trusting their rifles. Trusting their aim. And I mean, it worked out for a long while. A 7-1 scoreline. Nordvind have got on a little bit of a streak here. Found a few rounds just to recover the situation. As we do see Astro falling back out of the bathrooms. Back onto the site. And this has been how Fierce have played. They've played very passively. Holding on the sights, waiting for Nordovin to walk into them. Not looking to get aggressive, not looking to find any kind of information. As everybody just takes a pause, the utility will come through from Nordovin. They're not committed to this A-bomb site. They have time to rotate if they so choose. And they've left Tenski towards short as an insurance policy. The utility will come over the top. And for the time being, it looks like Nordovin will commit to a three players here for the CT side, including Astro, Alex, and Stanley. Can they hit these shots as the smokes will keep them completely locked out? Astro looking for the spam through. He'll find one, but the trades are going the way of Nordovin as they grab a double kill. And you can see these aggressions. Tenski towards the B-bomb site cuts the rotations out. 4v3 now. Chroman on just one point of health. Still somehow alive will finally be found by Eccles. And that starts to make things a little bit awkward. Hallzerk on the AWP, though. What an angle. Harry gets another, and it's a cleanup. Nordavind, how are you unlocking these bomb sites? That looks so good again for Fierce. They're reading the situation correctly. They've got the players on the right bomb site, and they're hitting their shots. But Hallzerk just again is finding a lot of damage. AWP is really paying dividends for the T side as Nordovin looking good for the recovery. Again, the money not quite there for Fierce. They've really struggled after that seven round string. They're down onto the Deagles, the CZ 75s. No hero warp on Alex on this occasion as Astro looks to get aggressive towards long. There's plenty of presence here for the T side. He can't quite hit the shot. Hallzerk takes him down and Alex is the next one to line up, but the Krieg is doing so much damage. Tenski with the double before the trade comes in. And although Eccles does have that Krieg to work with now, Alex is completely out in no man's land. Finds himself just the one kill before Hallzerk takes him down, switching on the Deeg and Rubino. Cleaning up house, 7-6 the scoreline, and that's a well dealt with Eco coming out from Nordovin. They lose a couple of players, but they won't be too fussed about that. The economy's got enough rigidity in it for the Norwegian side that they can just fall back onto the full buy. And they know they've done the work they needed to do there. They're forcing Fierce into more and more awkward positions. Astro, no head armor, very limited utility. Doesn't even grab himself a defuse kit. Just the one smoke early on as he will be able to afford the AWP. This time being left alone towards the A-bomb site to open things up. Nordovind fall into their default. Not looking to get aggressive towards the A-bomb site at all. And that's allowing Fierce to play this four-man hold on B. They can just have Alex on the fast rotation, and he is currently up towards the site. Buying a little bit of time. Nice nade stack onto Eccles. They know he jump peaks that angle down to 20 HP before he spotted out any kind of contact. That is exactly what you want on your T side. Getting the damage in early on. Free damage with the nades. $900, and you nearly find yourselves a kill as the Molotov will force Astro into a little bit of an awkward spot. Nordovind, they found their early damage. They start to just reset the round, start to take control of the bathrooms, and it is Astro. Going to have to put play a big role here for Fierce if they want to take the round. Currently posted up in those bathrooms. He does have a nice angle to work with. There's no crossfire established. Normally, you'd see the second player in that little nook there, but 
No such play for Astro. He's all on his own as Nordwind are absolutely queuing up around these bathrooms to try and take him down. He is going to have to go absolutely huge here. He'll hear the nades being thrown. He'll know the information, but he's completely locked into the bathrooms for the time being. Astro is going to have to go huge. He spots the players. Can't quite hit the shot. Falls back, but the Molotov's going to keep him here. And now he has to go huge. Halsuk with the reaction gets the opener. And with Eccles on 20 HP, this is going to be very rough for Fierce. They're trying to get a boost going onto the site, but Halsuk again spots it out. 5v3. There's nothing more that Fierce can do. Croman takes down Eccles. Tag from those early nades. And Nordovin, they are really accelerating here. 5 versus 2. Frey and Stanley. They've just got to save. They've got to try and keep the rifles. It will draw level. A 7-1 to one lead becomes 7 apiece as Nordavind. They are starting to make something of their map pick. Really looking good so far on their T side. It looked like it was going to be an awful series for them. After they really struggled to start things off, they took a 7-1 deficit. But accelerating back into things. They've kept all five players alive here. They'll have a perfect buy into the last round of the half. And... It's a very different story for Fierce Esports. Of course, they're going to be on maximum possible loss bonus. So 3,400 a player. We can see a couple of rifles dropped by Frey and Stanley. And that's exactly why they've saved. They're allowing their teammates to pick up a little bit more utility. A little bit more firepower here. But it's looking good for Nordovin towards the end of this first half. Hulzerk really starting to come alive. Has just overtaken Astro 15-8. and eight. And I mean, you looked at Astro early on and you thought that AWP was going to reign supreme. On the CT side for the UK roster. But hasn't been the case. Hulzerk has really bitten back towards the end of this first half. As the early nades come in. And they're going to find some significant damage. Astro just looking for a timing. But Harry takes him down. He has bought a little bit of position for Alex on the spray. Alex with the double. Spots the third player. He can fall back as well. But Ops to go for the aggression. Will be taken down. Dealing significant damage in the process. A three versus three now. Nordovin, there's tags onto Chroma there. Stanley, oh, just about stays alive. Down to 16 HP. He's found the frag. That is all that he needed to do there. He's bought his team an opportunity. Eccles holding out towards Long is the next point of contact. As Nordovin start licking their wounds. Chroma on just 12 points of health is really going to struggle to be effective. Bomb on his back. Currently in towards the bathroom for Eccle. He's in no man's land. How does he stay alive so long there? Chroma finally able to take him down with Halzerk's assistance. And now Stanley on the flank. This is all timing now. Both teams have a tag player. Frey will find the first, but spotting him out. Hulzerk takes down the tag of that. Stanley, it's all on to Frey. Frey versus Hulzerk. One versus one. The flashbang is so good. He'll hear all of this information. They're both on either side of the smoke. They've spotted each other out. Who finds the frag? Hulzerk on the edge of the smoke. Will make it happen. Nordovin, they will take the lead at the half. 7-2-8. Nordovin looking good to take their map pick. It is a little bit CT sided overpass and they've given themselves an advantage heading into the CT half. That is not something you find yourself saying every day. What a half from Nordovin. Fierce looked so, so good early on. And if they can capture a little bit more of that early form, they're going to be in a great position heading into the second half. But they just look like they put let their foot off a gas a little bit. They just let their foot off the gas. They let... Nordovin come back into this matchup as everybody's just getting warmed up yet again. Just getting back into proceedings. Almost a let off for Nordovin. They look like they were absolutely under the cosh there as Fierce gets seven rounds in quick succession. But coming back into things, eight to seven at the half. Let's see what Fierce can do on the T side. We'll be picking up the early utility onto Astro. Full armor across the board for Nordovin. They're not looking to play retake. They're not looking to even let that bomb get down. No diffuse kit picked up. What will be the execute of choice for Fierce Esports? A fairly heavy A set up early on from the CT side. Rubino, Hulzak and Tenski all going to get aggressive. Try and be proactive on the information find. But Fierce, they're just going to hightail it through to B. It's Croman and Harry to try and hold this one down. They don't have the defuse kit. So if the bomb goes down, things are going to get awkward. But Fierce, they're swarming the site. Not quite finding the frags just yet. Everybody's staying alive for Nordovind. And Harry finding the opening pick. Buying his teammates time. And now they can start to swing. Croman grabs one as he makes his way out of short. And Croman drops the bomb. This is really awkward for Fierce. All of a sudden, they're four versus two with the bomb down. Four versus one now. And Eccles can find nothing. How does that work for Nordovind? Nordovind. Clearly trusting their players to hit the shots. Chroman and Harry towards that B bomb site. They stay alive for so long. Staying towards short, staying towards CT. Just buying time for the swift rotation down through connector. The rest of their teammates swarm the site. Not something you normally see on the CT side, but Fierce even unable to get the bomb down. No cash injection. They'll grab a couple of P250s, but 
SMGs almost across the board for Nordovin to start trying to farm some cash. Start to build up that CT economy over the edge of the smoke. Tenski will find the opener. Brought down to 36. Will be traded out by Asher on the Glock. But there we go. Hulzak, he's just got this one locked. How does Stanley find that? I was about to say he has this locked down. But on 22 HP, Stanley actually finds a refrag. Ah, Chrome. And there we go. Starting to clean up house. Frey will find one on the refrag. So it's a little bit more expensive than it had to be for Nordovin. But they find the round all the same. Keep the M4 up on Harry as the buy should come in now for Fierce. Doing good damage, I'll say that. For two P250s and three Glocks to find three kills on that second round is really impressive stuff. And they will be able to buy strongly as a consequence. Grabbing themselves three Kriegs, two AK-47s. Nordavind have had to pick up a couple of SMGs. They do have three rifles to back it up. Tenski sticking with the nerfed Org. Going to be taking that in towards long early on. Looking for the ranged engagements as Rubino tanks a nade into Stanley to open things up. And the long aggression, that is perfectly timed. Hulzuk with the double kill. Shutting down Fierce before the round even gets started and what a play from Nordovin they are being so proactive on their CT side looking to get aggressive looking to lock out the T side of fierce esports on what we believe to be their map pick and now five versus three they can just fall back and they know it they can play super passively there's no need to go for any kind of aggression whatsoever for the CT side just wait for the remainder of fierce to walk into them it's going to take something of a miracle for this UK roster to really get anything going at this point they're going to try and take their aggressions out towards long the bomb on the back of Eccles. But they've got two Kriegs and an AK to try and open up what has been a resolute defense from Nordovin so far. Making their way in towards the bathrooms. But of course, with this short aggression from Harry and Chroman, they've just got this locked out, Nordovin. They can have the players aggressive. Hallzerk's in towards the connector. He's cutting out the rotation down onto the B bomb site out in the open, though. He will be an early find for Eccles. That starts to make things a little bit more interesting now as the rotations start to scramble. Tenski still on that AUG down to 44 HP. Has Rubino in support, but of course with only the MP9, he's going to struggle to be effective unless the firefight comes up close and personal. As the wall of smokes comes out and Fierce look to get the bomb down. Eccles has cut out the initial flank, but do they expect the second player? Harry already on it. Grabs the M4. He's spotted the planter and he'll just tap away at the head to make it 3v2. He's buying time and allowing his teammates to just lock out this A bomb site. 10 seconds left as Tenski drops the bomb. Frey can find one, but he's already been dinked down to 38 and there is no more time on the clock. The timing is good on the flank. Harry finds the frag. 11 to 7 the scoreline. Nordovin needing just five more rounds to take what would have been an incredibly quick first map the way of the Norwegian side. What a comeback from Nordovin. After a 7-1 lot, like they were 7-1 down and they haven't lost a round since. 10 in a row. Deagle's P250, CZ75 for Eccles to try and make something happen for Fierce, but it is not looking good now. The map pick's starting to make a lot more sense as Alex absolutely eats the early nades. Hulzak opting to get aggressive in towards the fountain. That flash should actually fully blind him. Astro looking to hunt him down on the P250. Up close and personal can do some damage, but Hulzak able to find a nice double kill playing around the pillar. He even grabs himself a third. He is buying so much time as well for his team. Alex on low HP. This is the ace for Hulzak. 1v1. Of course he'll find it. Scoped in on the creek 12 to 7 the ace for hall's hook tapping away at the heads on the eco and now fierce are really on the ropes 12 to 7 down fierce and they are yet to get a round on their t side astro does manage to grab himself the awp nordovin not even going to bother picking it up they've got those two kriegs recovered from the t side clearly confident with those at range as eccles will pick one up for fierce so much money to work with now for the CT side. They're starting to build up their bank. They're saving so many rifles. As the early spam from Eccles will find a little bit of damage onto Chroman, but the Phoenix control is still there for the CT side. They're still grabbing that control away from Fierce and really forcing the UK roster into some awkward positions. No real map control for the T side. They're waiting for aggressions, but Nordavind have got aggressive towards short and nobody's there to cover it for Fierce. Alex starts to lock out the bathrooms. They start to try and find a little bit of map control to work with Fierce. But the setup is so strong for Nordovin. Tenski on one of those Kriegs is holding long. He's got support from Hulzerk behind if he needs to fall back off the angle. And Rubino just plays for the information in towards the bathrooms. Not the best fragger in the world on that Nordovin side of things. But he can do a job when needed. And now Fierce, they have to find an opening pick. 
Astro on that AWP might have a chance here up against Tensky swinging wide, but Tensky rips his head off, gets the second. Tensky with the double and damage onto Stanley as well. That's just made it all too easy. Hulzuk takes down Stanley, and this round yet again is over before it's even started. Four versus two now for Eccles and Frey. The flash not going to work out. Hulzuk does go down. So 3v2 now. The bomb currently still trying to make his way out onto the A bomb site. The information play from Rubino. He's just spotted the bomb out. He's spotted the remaining players. He has the support from Harry. He'll drop the smoke. And now Nordovin, they just need to look to lock this one out. Frey's been spotted out as well. The headshot angle not working out at all as Rubino absolutely rips it off. And Eccles on half HP he tries to take the fight. There's nothing he can do. 13-7 to 7 the lead now for Nordovin. And they are just three rounds away from taking map one. They are looking so, so good here, Nordovind. You can see why they most likely pick this map. You can see they feel confident on it. They're hitting their shots. And I mean, this is the kind of confidence you can take into Nuke. Yes, Nuke is an awful map for Nordovin, but if you can take this confidence in, you can do so, so much. Also going to go aggressive on the early peak, try and isolate the fight. Misses the initial shot onto Astro, who has had to drop down onto the CZ, so he's not going to be of much use in this round. AKs and Kriegs for his teammates, though. They're really going to have to be the instigators. Try and drop a rifle. Try and give Astro something to recover as he lines up the utility. Starts to throw it in towards the bathrooms. Who's uh, currently playing around the divider? Needs to be flashed off and he will be fully blinded. Falls back into the toilets and he has support. Tensky tight on the angle. Will find the opening pick and he's looking for more. How is Tensky doing this much damage? A triple, a quad kill for Tensky. Spraying down fierce esports as it's all on to Astro on that CZ75. Fierce just getting absolutely dismantled. Astro will be able to find one in response, but down to 13 HP, recovering a Krieg. He's in such an awkward spot here, and he knows it. Nothing more he can do. Fierce are getting absolutely annihilated here on Overpass. 14 rounds, 13 in a row for Nordovind. As Fierce still unable to find a single one on their T side of Overpass. 13 rounds in a row for Nordovin. That is some seriously impressive statistics for the Norwegian side. The buy is in, of course. Fierce trying to prevent this one going to map point, but it's four max tens and a Galil. And it looks like we're falling back to the basic strats. Rush B looks like the call. The Molotovs and the nades early on as Fierce will take control of Phoenix. There's so much presence here again. The Mac 10's up close and personal. We'll find an opening pick. Chroman goes down and that buys an opportunity. But Hulzerk and Rubino hold firm. Harry able to find one before he's traded out. And Frey, actually on the recovered M4, gets a lot of damage. Hulzerk though. The double! The double collapse through the wall. Through two players. Hulzerk, can you stop that man on the AWP? How does he do that? He's just dropped his 30 bomb with that as well. That is seriously impressive from Hallzerk. I knew he was ridiculous on the AWP. He really does go off. But this is just another level here on Overpass. 15 to 7. Map point for the CT side. The rifles are out, but it's a Galil, AKs, and Kriegs as Hallzerk just wants to go early on this pick. He's a little bit isolated out in the open. That's an easy enough find to open things up. But again, he knows he's got Tensky backing him up. On these scoped rifles at range, Tensky again with the double kill. How is he doing this? Rubino's going to swing right into the crosshairs, finds the dink, but Alex will take him down to a 3v3. But Tensky still alive, still causing problems in the bathrooms. And with Chroman so aggressive into Phoenix, they can afford the rotation. Tensky out in the open, a little bit isolated, will be found. 3v2, perhaps an opportunity here for Fierce as Alex lines up the smokes. Harry is currently alone on the A bomb site. He's going to be three versus one. There's a couple of tags for him to try and work with, but he's got to deal with Frey first of all. And out in the open, Harry will be found. Chroman left 3v1. Fierce might be able to find a round, salvage something on their T side here, but... Chroman not going to let that happen quite so easily. Finds himself a first, trying to get aggressive up the angle. He's almost got the timing to split the defense, but Fierce will hold. They will find one round on their T side. And the economy is not great to work things out here for Nordovin. Not looking amazing here for the CT side. Their economy is a little bit wobbly. We should be able to get a couple of bits and pieces. Indeed, they will manage to scramble five rifles together. Hallzerk, no AWP, but utility across the board for the CT side. And no AWP available either for the T's. But what a shot from Alex. Taking the early pick. And Hallzerk's out in the open. Manages to find himself a double. Rubino's up in support. How do they do this, Nordovin? The setups are just looking too good for Fierce. The opening pick goes the way of the T side, but instantly Hallzerk and Rubino respond. Connector and the party peak. A killer piece. 
four versus three. Fierce are right back where they started. A man disadvantage, no real map to work with. Astro's trying to start to clear the bathrooms. Might actually be able to hit a shot here. If Hulzak peeks a little bit too enthusiastically on the jump. Astro's looking to line him up. Takes the tap, misses the shot, gives away the position. And Fierce again, they look like they're just going to have to try and barrel in towards this A bomb site. There's still utility. There's still firepower available for the CTs. This is going to be an incredibly difficult take if they do look to hit the A bomb site here. There is a few smokes available for the T side. They've got Molotovs as well to try and just use that utility. Fierce have been struggling to get into the sites without those proactive picks. Hulzerk gets the information again. Astro not quite hitting the pick, not finding that opening shot. Early nades rain over the top. It's going to be a three-on-three -three onto this site for Fierce Esports. They need to make their way in as the auto director absolutely spans. Hulzerk gets one. The trade is there, but they're making their way straight into the crosshairs. It's all onto Astro. He can get nothing. A demolition job, 16-8 to 8 in map one. Nordavind grab themselves the lead.